Hello, everyone. Uh, joining us today, we have Mr. Philippe Dennis. So, Philippe has more than 25 years of experience in the film and animation industry. He has worked on many well known film anima animated features and movies, ranging from Ants to Minority Report. So, now as a VFX supervisor for DNEG Animation, he has most recently delivered Ron's Condrong, the company's first animated feature film. So without any further delay, let's listen to Philippe Dennis talk about insights into making of Ron's Gone Wrong. Thank you, Philip, for joining us. We are really honored to have you. All right, thank you everyone, for the introduction, Krishna Um So, and, and uh, I wish I wish I could have been with you, you know, uh, I'd love to go in India, but uh, you know, that's not the time right now. So hopefully in the next few years, I can do that. We do that again with probably another project. Um, all right, so let's get started. Um, um, so I'm going to talk about, you know, developing the design process of DNAG animation. And when we started on the project, my, my friend and colleague, uh, um, David Pierce, uh, who is a, the, the cinema, one of the cinematographers on the project, started to think about what we could do. Actually, I went too fast uh, um, because we had the opportunity and the challenge of starting from a blank canvas. Locksmith Animation was a brand new company. That was the first project. And for Dineg, which you know, is so well known and, and amazing, amazing at you know, so many Academy Awards and, and, and uh, other uh, reward, uh, awards uh, in the VFX, that was the first uh, animated feature animated project. So it was, was interesting to get started. And it's actually, frankly, that was the reason also why I, I joined the company. I was like, to be able to be part of that, uh, the, the, the starting something. So we sat together and we started to think about, okay, what could we, what kind of approach we could have? What, what kind of changes, slight changes, because of course there is not, not a revolution, but how could we approach the project slightly different from a, from a, a design point of view? And what we, we thought about was definitely in the visual development strategy, that was probably the biggest difference we could make. So we looked at <clears throat> what's happening in general it's divided usually in pre-production and production. And it's fairly abstract. I mean, we know how it works. Uh, you start and you do a bunch of design, you work your pre-production, and then you switch in production. But we, we decided to think about it a slightly different, with a different angle, and talk about more prototype and making or fabricating. Okay, so the pink curve is the prototyping. So you have a phase for prototyping, and then you go on the making phase, which is usually the production, or you have to run, make all your shots, and so on. Um, we looked at what's the, pot, the, the definition. I opened the dictionary and looked at it. And pot, prototype definition is an original model on which something is based or formed. Now, you know, because I'm a little older, I did a lot of, I studied mechanical engineering, and then I ended up in design and architecture before, you know, going into animation. Um, which was great because I learned, you know, different ways to, 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 to work and think. But when I was doing my internship at Renault, you know, the car, uh, I was in the fabrication part. <clears throat> but across the wall, uh, they were doing a, a bunch of uh, car and they were banging on things and making a lot of noise. And I could not look because it was forbidden. And I, I asked, it was, and said, where's the prototyping department? And what I mean by that, they were like, really shaping the car they wanted to make by, you know, people with a lot of talent and, you know, uh, uh, carving what the car, the design they wanted from the inside to the outside. So that's where I was like, okay, that's interesting when we start the project and that's where we, we're shaping things. The goal is answering broad and critical questions, right? So you want, you have a problem or you have a visual constraint or whatever it is, you start with asking a question. The requirement to do reprototyping is rapid iteration. You won't spend too much time. You're not doing the final project, the, the uh, thing that you, 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 you're creating. Uh, you're working and showing as much as possible in context. So it's not, you know, we don't model and they are surface because that takes time. You kind of want to work together and that's working in parallel. So you may have an artist who's actually a good generalist we can show you, or you have actually a small team
standardized parts, right? And there is this idea of standardized. Now, you know, fabrication, standardized, we all artists, you know, so people who are working on the show may be like, oh, well, what are we doing? But the point is, we're not making cars here. We're not making millions of the same thing over and over. Each shot is particular. Each shot has, you know, something that you need to bring in. But there is definitely, you don't want to ask any question when you, uh, everything is open, when you start in production start. You have to have find your camera language. You have to find, have find your, your shape language and your texture language. So that's what I mean by standardizing some aspect of it. So the artist can actually aim for what they want and, and produce a uh, little. Effect. So um, I came up with a shape with that, which is this. Um, what I like about it, it's because it's organic. It's a process or you, it's a journey. You know, you travel, you can have more curve hopefully not too many because that means you spend a lot of time or you can be much more direct. The point is when you arrive at the center, you, ask, you answer the question you want. And the way it works, the way it works is usually we start by doing art and we do a little more art and it's criticized at art. And then you can start modeling whenever you think it's possible and you modify by doing art. And then you put some camera modeling and some surfacing and so on. So that's where the organic process is occurring. There is not like a, a really a, a, a a full structure like we're going to see in the, the fabrication mode, right? Now, what's important in this is actually asking the right question because you don't have one problem to solve. You have so many when you make a move. Uh, then you need to start and be like, okay, we're going to do some, we're not going to work on something. And, and what, are, what are we trying to achieve? What, what are we trying to answer? And that's critical because as artists, when we work, we get often taken on the detail or, you know, we go into the weeds and we lose the big picture and we lose where we started with, with in mind. Now, the question may change and that's okay because I don't know, the scripts have changed, the idea have changed while you would convene in this case and you redesign the test for what you're trying to do. But as if you're still trying to, if you started with a, 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 a problem to solve, you need to keep that in mind. So when you diverge, you're like, okay, guys, are we trying to solve that? No, we're not. So let's forget about that. We'll do another thing for what we're working on, what, what, we, what we're talking about now. And let's go back to the answer we wanted to. Because a movie is more, I mean, the, the, the graph is a little more like this. And actually, it's a little more like this. So tons of things to do. And at the end, when your movie is open, that's a beautiful film. But that's the way you want to think about it. Uh, fabrication looks more like this. So by this time, you know, let's say you start a sequence, you do the art for the sequence, and then you do the model, and then you do the surfacing, and then you do the camera, because you can't go back and forth. I mean, we'd like to, and we're trying to, but it, you, you need to get, you know, you have a, a team of modelers, and then you have a team of surfacers, and then you need to go to uh, layout, and, you know, and the rigging, and, you know, and so on. So you need to put things and actually uh, uh, create and, and, and um, a lot of, of a lot of um, aspect of the movie. Um, so, but the critical part of this, you better have answer a big question because, as an example, you know, camera layout between camera and layout and lighting, you have ten to twelve weeks, you know, on the schedule. That means if you find a problem on the layout standpoint, or even on the build standpoint, when you're in lighting, we're well, in trouble because you basically lost ten to twelve weeks. You didn't lose ten to twelve weeks because you're going to kind of, you know, modify, but you may lose two or three or four weeks. And by that time you have a full lighting team waiting for assets that is not working. So that's where you really want to think about, you know, approaching that in the time. Philippe, sorry yes. to interrupt you. I guess uh, you've stopped sharing your screen. Can you share your screen? Oh, I share my screen. Okay. Sorry. Yeah. Oh, that's too bad. You should have told me before. Uh, Oh, I had to redo it then. Um, I'm sorry. So, okay, I'll go back then. Um, I'm not going to do, can you see this? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I was sharing and I'm sorry. Okay, I'll go back then. Um,
All right. All right. So that was that was the curve I was talking about uh, between. Can you see it now? Yes, Philip. Yes, we can. See okay. It. Thank you. So that's the pre-production and production. And so this curve, the pink ones, is the prototyping I was talking about. And the making is this. And we'll go back to this. Uh, those are the definition, you know, so really what I was, so I'm not gonna stick on that because I explained already. Um, and there, so the curve of the prototyping is this one, very organic. It's really a journey to go to answer your question. Um, and there, the way we do things, I was like just trying to illustrate the uh, organic aspect of how we do. You know, you go, you do a piece of art, you criticize it, you modify, you do a little more art, and then you do like, oh, start, let's do a model because we want to see that in 3D. And then you do a little bit of texturing. So that's, that's this process, this organic process. And hopefully as you go, you fine tune your question. You're like, okay, we like that, or we don't like this, or we modify this. And, you, and at one point you're like, okay, we kind of answer our question. Um, and what I wanted to say, what I said also is like, it's much more than one curve, obviously. Throughout the journey of actually designing your movie, you have tons and it's actually looking more like this, right? So you have tons of, you know, little leaves that you have to put together and they are, you know, which actually constrict one bigger leaf and then so on. And then you have the full, the full plant, which is hopefully, hopefully your movie. Um, and fabrication looks more like this. So it's a more linear process because you need to, uh, to stay on, on track with your schedule. Um, and that's what I was explaining, you know, the difference between that and that. So that's, I'm getting back now on time. Um, so you have 12 weeks of difference. So what we also plan, even though we're on fabrication, and I'll show you some example later, um, we actually trying to do some, for instance, lighting early on, uh, not so much an animation. We're not fully able to do that a little bit, uh, but definitely on the layer, definitely on the build part for the modeling aspect, actually. I don't have that on my graph, and I'll show you some example how we, how we did it. Now, the goal of this, why we're doing this? It's because if we put enough, you know, you better put a little more effort and time in your prototyping, because if you do that, you may avoid this, which is less but way more because there you have a team of 200, 250, 300, 350 people. So if you didn't answer those big design question, then you have to answer for every single shot, it's multiplied. And then you have a much bigger team. So that's the idea. Um, now, beyond that, I have a full approval process uh, than I could have run due to on the, on, the, on the front end of the pipeline and on the back end of the pipeline. I'm not gonna bore you with that, but it's associated to this. How do we approve things so we make better choices, contextual concepts? But I'm sure you probably wanna see more images than that. So uh, that may be for another talk. Um, so the, the, some of the visual challenges we had on, on once gone wrong. I mean, there was, there was one more particular with several, and I'm just gonna tackle one today. Uh, it's we had two types of, of work to design. We had the high tech uh, and minimalist style of global corporation with the bots and Ron in particular, our hero, uh, the bubble HQ, which is the, the bubble headquarters, the company we creates those bots, and the bubble store, uh, which where you sell those bots. And then we had the more organic and graphic look for the rest of the world uh, with Barney's neighborhood, Barney's the, the you know, hero kid. Uh, um, we goes on an adventure with Ron uh, and Barney's neighborhood, Barney's house, and all the nature because at one point they go on a, on a journey in the in the woods, um, and that was one of the challenge because the director wanted to make sure they were clearly different but they could also live together. Okay, so I start with bots because the bots were you know huge part. I mean huge huge part. They were the reason of the movie, and uh, when Luxme started. And they started to gather a little bit, and I think probably those, it was probably done in 2015 or 2016, they gathered kind of the robot of the time, you know, that were existing, to just look at the, the design of the, the, the design choice that's been made. Um, and they also look at, you know, because those bots need to communicate, what was the story of, of cell phone? What they, they found, I was like, okay, what was the cell phone, you know, back in the days, not that long for me, <laughs> but, uh, but you know, what, you know, so you had different design button, it was more or less complicated. 
But when the iPhone came, everything changed, right? And the idea was like, well, it's simple object and just a screen and everything is on the screen. And that was kind of the idea of, okay, what the bot will be. So they started to design simple shape, like sphere can be most you know, simple than that. And they have a pure shape, you know, different, different type of pure shape with different elements. And they started to design with this idea of, of a screen. And so the, here are the two versions, how did they move and so on. So the pure shape that was already advanced enough, the one at the top, that's kind of the one we ended up. But we ended up with, you know, that's roughly the shape of it. And this idea will be a skin underneath that you can do. So the skin could, you know, have a face. Um, and then they could have emojis. Uh, they could have a bunch of text and so on. And they also could download a bunch of skins. And because each kid, could, based, based on the, the, what they liked or they love, you know, if they, they're like superhero, they could download a, a skin. So those are three different skins, for instance. And I'll show you, we created about 132 skin design. Um, and so that's populate the world. Now, they need to be animated because they have faces, they have expression, but we did three, three categories of, of skin. Uh, we did the one we were uh, um, animated, uh, you know, hand animated, so the, 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 the animator could control that. So there, here there is a motion. So everything is done with motion graphics and something then we'll see. There was a huge, huge motion graphics project uh, once one more. Uh, so each each uh, skin could move here, and they were they could change be, between the, uh, the 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 beat of the of the. There is a song behind, and I'm not playing, uh, but uh, you know it's it's based on the on the beat. And the animator could change that. The animator, but also even crowd, if we need to, to integrate those guys. So that was a certain type where like about twelve characters could be fully animated by the uh, by uh, by the animators. Um, and there we had also skin done in motion graphics and there were loops. So that, that motorcycle bot, so it's a bot with like designed as a motorcycle, the wheel is spinning. It's just a loop on the, on the motion graphic. Uh, so motion graphics traded that loop and then we applied to it. And then there are just some example of those unwrapped um, uh, skin that we put on the, on the show. So they're looping, they're looping. And then we had also some static one for the bots, we were on crowd, they were further, so they were just there, it just cut off, it was fine. So we could manage that because crowd had to manage those things as well. Uh, so, and, and I'll show you, there is another level of complexity in this. Uh, so here's an example. Um, it's when Barney arrives at school and with all the bots. Uh, from a design standpoint, they also group by category. So there is different, you know, kids love the sport or kids love, um, uh, um, you know, uh, um, basketball or, or, or football or, or, or cars or, you know, so there is like a variety of different skin um, and, and they were grouped usually and the, the kids were also were wearing different clothes. So that, that was a, one of the complexity of putting that together. Uh, but that gives you a good example of, you know, the range of skin we had on it. Uh, the other thing, as I was saying, there is not only skin, there is also you know, that can text message, they receive message, they can have panel and coming. So there is another layer that we need to drive. Uh, animator could drive, but also crowd. And here I'll show you an example of crowd. Uh, or those bots are getting a little crazy right now. Um, and they, they, they're getting rid of the safety control on the bot. So, but you see all those elements and then they can change things. So we need to drive that with the rig by just clicking say, okay, now call, call that, 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 uh, that panel, call that skin and so on. Okay, so that was for our regular bot. Run was a different uh, um, animal, if I may say, uh, because he's, he's, he had a problem. He fell from a truck and he's spiked, so it's not working quite well. Uh, he's, a, he's a little crack on his left butt, uh, left side of, uh, you know, bottom of, uh, side, and he's, he's very simple, so that he cannot download uh, skin, so he is, he's a sample face on the white material, and uh, he has some panel and he can come here, but they, they, they don't have too much color. They just, you know, it's just it's just not working super well. But one of the things that we wanted to do was actually finding the character because he will have less feature than the other bot. So 
uh, one of the director at the beginning of the show started to do sample drawing. And there is nothing better than drawing. So it's, again, trying to answer a big question and narrow down what the, the, the you know, uh, the character of Ron. And of course, he has to be endearing. So, you know, having sleep is great. The hat was really a, quite fun. I will show you, I'll show you some of the example um, with the model and so on. Uh, he's also sort of innocent. So he, how do you express that innocence? So th those drawings were really great to give us uh, uh, an insight of what Ron and how also as an audience, how do we react to it? Before doing any modeling. So you want, you want that approach. And it's done on every single project, but recapturing that very simple. He's also a little clumsy, so he, he does end up, end up adding a, a nice cream, but uh, you know, things happen to him because he's not, he's not very coordinated. He also didn't download a GPS. So the idea was like, well, maybe he has a map. And to get a map and stuff he needs, well, he needs a backpack. We ended up with a bin bag. But again, it's just making him more human and you know, for us to connect with different visual. Uh, and there, there was some post, uh, you know, uh, defined way more done after in animation by the uh, um, Steve Mayer was our, our, our soup and, and lead animator on, on Ron. Uh, same for the expression. So those were early page of expression to find what it is. So there is one category. So that's his face. He doesn't have like fancy skin again. But uh, there is one particularity. He's also pixelate uh, because his technology is not great. And it can be different based on his level of electricity. And of course, is the moment in the scene because you want to take advantage of that to express uh, uh, and have uh, um, Ron delivering and, uh, you know, uh, his part and, and, and his performance. So that was, that was a lot of technology behind all this. And I'll show you in a minute how the rig work. Um, the, the, it was done with vector shape. So in order, because what was important both for bots, uh, normal bots, but definitely for Ron is because he just has, is a pill shape with two wheels, which are his legs, if you think, and his arms, um, all his expression on his face needed to be coordinated with his body expression. And so we need to make sure then animators had the full control of it. And we had to do the same thing for the skin, but the skin uh, was done slightly different. We also some with vector map, but uh, mostly it was with motion graphic and some, some, some poses done in motion graphic and then the animator could click, okay, a little bit like a blend shape if you want, but with motion graphics. For Ron, that was uh, done uh, for his face with a uh, with, um, vector shape that was rasterized at real time. So that's, that's, a, that's the way the rig was fully bit. And then we had on top of it some uh, uh, R&D done to get the pixelization so they could play. And that was, that gave a lot of uh, um, room for the animator to actually come up with great expression and idea and timing. And we wanted that because they needed to find those what, who was wrong? Like the same, you know, you never, I may have an expression when I'm angry or happy and, and another actor may have another one. Uh, so you wanted to carry that, you know, that performance in and they, they did an amazing job. The solution because we wanted to make sure he kept in his simple design. Um, so a little drawing and coming with the idea. And that's where we sort of ended up. I mean, that's where we ended up, and you'll see more uh, images. And again, the hat was really a great find uh, because all of a sudden he looks like a little kid and he's not just a robot. There's something more, um, more human and organic about him, which you know, makes him very endearing. Uh, other thing we had to do with Ron, because it's simple, we wanted to make sure it's still a piece of technology. And those are early uh, um, design uh, done by Till Novak. Uh, we really started actually before, he was doing that before I started to him on and off when he, when he needs a, his, his genius in terms of design. And, um, you know, he, he put like a big piece of engineering. So that was what he <laughs> sort of designed. Of course, we didn't end up with that because it's, it's more, a little more like a, a you know, kind of Terry Gillian, uh, Brazil type of design. And that's, it's not what we wanted. We wanted something much more simple. But the idea of having something behind was important. And all the question was like, how much do we see behind? So we built it. There was like 
tons of Orlean Predor was the production designer did so many versions on this, but we wanted something simple. So we kept it at the bottom for two reasons, because we gave them uh, a little bit of weight, which was important by the shape. Uh, and also because we wanted to keep the top of his, of his face uh, clear enough so we could read his expression. So we didn't want to have too much business at the bottom. That's the, the wrong uh, build. There's a lot of mechanical, you know, you see sphere, all this stuff was rigged and was moving with the arm. That's what kind of a sphere magnet we was uh, turning and, and actually uh, making the, the butt work. Same for the, for the bottom, uh, you know, all these, um, these legs and all the system, it's actually mechanically sort of working. Uh, uh, it's, it's, it was rigged, so it, it, it was believable and tangible. Um, and then you have the, you know, the journey of, of Ron toward the, toward the movie, which like stuff fairly new, except for his little crack. On left, but there he goes on the truck and he goes in the forest, get mud and so on. Uh, so he has a few versions. That's that's one a little bit up already. Uh, he's been through a few things, and then that's run after he falls in the mud. Um, and just for a kick, we you know he ended up with a lot of mud because he falls in the mud. But we also did some tests, uh, which we lo I, I love doing that kind of thing because. Um, we're actually using it on one of the projects I'm working on. It's actually FX run a simulation of mud so they could generate mask that could be used by, by, um, by surfacing and to do the texture. We did all the... All right, so what we learned about that project was the you know, search should be bigger. When did I get... Can you tell me where I got disconnected? When the last time you saw me? Um, so bubble search should be bigger. The overall store design should match bubble HQ and material should be more physically correct. Okay, I try to keep up. And then we came up with that design, which was much more monumental. Um, that was, you know, center in the, in the, in the big plaza of uh, non-search. Non-search is the town, right? Where the, where, where Barney uh, lives and grew up. Uh, and then we started to look at and shoot in a different point of view. Um, just to check again, story point, those story points were there, they changed a little bit after, just to see where it was. And, and then we started to put materials in it and see how it was living. So that, that was, you know, the director felt much better about it. Since after that, they made all the change, they wanted the entrance to be more monumental, meaning more in the center. Uh, the bubble need to be a little bigger, but you know, those questions help us really change the design without spending too, too much time and being fully in production and be like, no, that's not what we want to do. Uh, we could also, uh, we had also this early painting uh, that was done that everybody loved, except for the fact, so the love in terms of the architectural structure, what they didn't like about it, it was a little more, um, a little too for, for, for adults, an adult uh, um, store and they wanted to make it more fun for kids because the bubble store is where you see bots and bots more you know i'm sure the adults would have loved to have one uh but even from the story standpoint it was more for the kids so it, it needed to be a little more playful a little more fun but the architecture was great so we focused on that and then we started to look at you know like the scale you know find interesting pov you know point of view uh, just to see where it was. We had also story beat in the moment. We need to see the elevator. There was a, there was a moment. So we had to put those, those escalators, sorry, not elevator, escalator in the set. Um, now, if you think about that, you know, the architecture is more like the Guggenheim Museum in New York, and you don't need escalator. You may need an elevator in the back to go up top, but not. But we needed those elements. So we started to play, okay, how are we going to put this? And simply started to shape those escalators, put them, see if they were going from the third floor to the first and, and so on to actually achieve that. And we managed to do it, but just by rotating things, trying to find very simple answer. At the same time, Aurelien, Prenal, the, the production designer was, you know, designing and that's where he made it more fun. So he went back, he did those diorama or you have like different themes in those diorama, like a race car, uh, you know, a dungeon and dragon uh, kind of world, uh, you know, and, and, for younger kids, 
uh, and started to come up with design. So he did two, he did one, there was some you know, critics no, or, or notes met, it was too busy. So he did another one or he simplified. If you read the notes here, um, he said, he's like, oh, you know, it's probably one too sim simplified. Well, actually, when we started to put things together, we realized that it was still too busy. It was hard to, to look. So we, you know, we, early on, we put texture on it. And, and again, trying to answer big question, we realized that actually we needed to simplify. I'll show you some examples. So that's the, that's the model, the final model we got uh, in layout as a shot. And that's where, so from the outside, we made it translucent and opaque. You still feel there is an inside. And then we made it more transparent on the, on the outside. So we had actually a connection with the city. That's a different point of view. It's where after the, the store closed, as the moment to actually the store closed. Um, and there from the, the inside, that's, you know, the set. That's the first time Barney passed by and he's so mesmerized because he looks at it and it's all so beautiful and shiny and you know it's his dream he wants to he doesn't have a butt he wants a butt and uh and as you can tell the the walls got much more simple much bigger broader gradient uh the structure here we kept it wide because we need we need to breathe as you you need to let your your eyes breathe it was too busy too complicated it's a lot of action on all those sequences so we need to make sure uh we could, we could see that's uh the shot i was telling you about uh, with the escalator, and that's where it is. And there is more on the escalator. escalator. It's a big action scene in there. But it, you know, also then it made sense because we actually looked at it, looked at the model early on and started to put together and started to shoot and be like, okay, it's gonna work. So it's a very complex set to design. Very complex set to surface because all those walls are animated. There is text coming in, there is little thing, you know, animated that need to be driven. It's a very complex set from a, so motion graphic was in charge of that. Um, and it was a complex set, extremely complex set to light because there is the light from the outside, the sun, but also we wanted to make sure that the wall, you know, broad light also. So you have those beautiful gradient of, you know, mix of the warm of the sun and the green of this and that. We wanted too much of the sun and the blue, really. So it was, it was, it was uh, the, the, the lighting team uh, uh, done amazing work on this. Uh, and that's another view, different point of view. So we see the walls are different. Uh, and that's, you know, much more simple things. So black, white, and blue, and clear read. And the beautiful grad, you know, the, the, this, this, this wall is talking to the ceiling here. Um, I also want to put your attention, you probably won't see it when you see the movie. But those little dots, uh, you know, they are half tone, uh, you know, grad that you do in like printing in paper. Um, those are animated, they move throughout the movie. They, those grad change that was done by uh, motion graphics. So a lot of attention to detail as we went. Just put those things together and they like, okay, let's push it. Uh, and there are those, one of the diorama, um, it's a space and place and with like fog, with effects and so on. And there are another diorama, it's like a race car, uh, um, place. And there you see more of that. So all those little, you know, but were coming up, the hello changing, the text is changing, all this stuff is animated. And then what I was telling you about, you know, the interaction, we wanted to make sure the store was part of the CD. So it's open, it's transparent, and we can actually connect with the CD. And, and, and that makes that from a lighting point of view, very, very tricky because sometimes you want to control where the sun goes, but you want to make sure you keep the, the different color. And then just to show you a little bit the complexity of the, the lighting. So those are all the light group and uh, element we had to actually constitute the lighting in the set. Okay. Now I'll move to the shot in the movie. Yeah, so that gives you a sense of what it is. Now, I need to accelerate. The Barney environment uh, that's his neighborhood. And that's a painting that was done very early and the director loved it because it just captured the light of Northwest America. Um, and, and they, you know, they loved the sort of the street going down to the, the, the you know, so it's more on the suburb of the skirt of the, of the, of the, of non search. That was something very important. The design of the house of Barney had to be actually pushed even further. So it, was different. 
And they came up with something like this because that is, Barney tells a lot about his story and his upbringing. His, his grandmother is Bulgarian and she's very uh, salt of the earth, uh, you know, woman. And then she, you know, strong, big, and she loves to cook and to cook, she has to have a garden and she, you know, for all of the because she cooks only with the vegetables. Uh, so that was a lot of storytelling in there. So we put that and then we, we model and really quickly we started to light. So that's, that's just to see how it works. And then we added surfacing and so on. And that's a shot in the movie. I'm accelerating a little bit because um, I have more to tell you and um, to show you, sorry. And that's the set. So that's one of the, the shots. And you see chicken, there is a goat as well. I don't have here. But that's that was it. If it, it felt it feels different than the the rest of the neighborhood, which is a little more still graphic on the design point of view. But Barney's house uh, is way more pushed, and you know, there is more texture in it, which was the goal. Uh, one other uh, uh, um, set that was challenging to design was the kitchen, because again, that's Donka, that's the grandmother. That's an early painting. But what the director loved by that, it was warm. It was uh, full of things, you know, and different things. You know, you have a battery. Uh, they end up in the movie, but you know, a lot of a lot of uh, elements that live together. She's, you know, drying sausage here, and uh, she's drying her clothes, and you know, garlic and so on. They love that, and they love the warmth. It's very, very human. So you have the minimalist uh, design of Bubble uh, Bubble Corporation, and they're just much more human. Uh, less sleek. Uh, it's off the screen, but less sleek uh, uh, environment. And so, because I want to model to actually design because of a story changing and you know how we wanted to design the, 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 the place, that's where we end up. And as soon as we had that, before doing any surfacing, we started to look at the lighting. Why? Because we wanted to make sure for the, the story we had to tell uh, and the sequence we had, we could actually bring in our flight. You know, the windows are sort of small. We wanted to make sure we could actually light it properly. Like, it would have been better if that was not working to actually change the model at that time versus having everything built and everything uh, surfaced to, uh, to and do it after because there, of course, you have to redo a bunch of things. So you try to limit the, the scope of work uh, before you define it's not fully working. It actually ended up working pretty well. We had that in mind early on because we did some early tests with something even simpler. Then we lighted with um, different type of lighting scenario. And then that's a one shot of the movie. You actually have the warm light, but also the cool coming from the, from the, from the garden. Another set was important was the shade. Uh, the shade is important because that's the part of Barney and Ron retreat. That's where they become really fine because Barney is showing Ron how to become his friend. And there is a nice peak, there's a nice picture. There's a lot of warm, and it's a place that we wanted to make sure that a kid would feel comfortable. I remember going in the attic of my grandparents and, and playing there because it was wood and the warm of the light was coming and it was full of things to discover. That reminded me a little bit of that. So as soon as something, as soon as we build the set, we started to do lighting in it because we had a lot of storytelling to do with the, the friendship board. Uh, so we we put that together and it started to different angle, getting the warm, getting the haze, getting an atmosphere, even putting every, any surfacing. And they were like, yeah, that's going to work. Now, what the advantage of doing that that way is when you start surfacing, while you have a lighting rig, then you can use. So we could actually look at it with a good lighting context versus having a dorm light, turning off the roof. It's not the way you see the set. So, uh, surfacing really took advantage of that. And we took advantage as, you know, I was looking at this, the, the, the surfacing and so on was in the context, so it's much, much better. And we did that with like tons of different views. And that's the, the shot, uh, the way we ended up. Funny and, I mean, interestingly enough, we actually changed the lighting direction because we wanted to make sure the emphasis was made on the, on the, the friendship board. And it was better to read like this by playing just bounce versus putting as we planned it originally, a key light directly, because there was so much structure, there was so many shadows, it was too complicated. So we reversed the lighting uh, and made it more available. And that's uh, the right view of it. So, you know, kind of a, a, a cute little place. Nature, um, because they go escape in the wood. Um, 
So those were very early painting. We didn't go as graphic on the modeling and on the texturing, as you can tell, uh, and I'll show you some images. But we loved the lighting, and that, I think, uh, uh, stayed with uh, soft lighting, the bright, exposing for the, the shadow, getting the bright going up, and so on. Uh, um, that's another one. The story did change. Uh, was there really early on, and that, that, so we didn't we didn't do the exact images. But again, the quality of the lighting was there on the on the Orion's painting. So the first thing we looked at is also the trees. How do we going to trees? And there is two different trees, two different type of trees. Sorry, there is the the big redwoods uh, trees that you see in you know north north uh, northwest America, um, and and some a little more. Um, um, Torture trees, and for the when they go deeper, deeper in the in the in the woods. Uh, and the first thing was done. That was done actually at Locksmith. Uh, was doing a little a little study uh, on the tree, general, and there was a close up. That's an old design of Barney. It's funny to see him like this. Um, it changed quite a bit after that. But um, but that was the tree, and it gave us a good sense of you know sort of the texture and the color palette and all those elements living together. And there we built, it was done at Dineg. Uh, that's the tree. That's the tree we ended up much bigger because we needed that. Uh, but also, but you see, we still pre you know, preserve the sort of the texture and the moss and you know, all those elements together. Uh, so there is a graphicness, a graphic aspect of it. And then you start to put them together in a very uh, simple layout context to see do we have enough scale. We actually had three trees actually in different scale. Now we scale them to get more variation. And that's another place where uh, there was a painting from Aurelian that everybody loved because of the light, because of the color, and so on. So putting that together, uh, we ended up with this shot, uh, these two shots, uh, which I, I really like. Uh, so that's, that's the layout. That's the, what we call a conform, which is everything in it, including the, the effects and the texture, but no lighting. And then uh, the breakdown of the shot. And I really love those little the simulation. It was uh, done by Nicolas New, um, and it was, uh, you know, it's very, very much I think, with a two on it. Um, that was great. We had also this image that love came really early. It's a slightly different than this one, but uh, yes, I did. And we love, and we wanted to carry that idea of like nature and going out. So you've been in, you know, big control rooms and so on, uh, bubble, HQ, and there you go, and you like you breathe again and it's those two characters together so that was very inspiring super graphic but of course we also look at images uh, so you have the painting one of painting and uh, here but also those images of how we treat the water the color of the water the wetness the moss the color of the leaves and so on um, and there we put that together uh, so because John and we did a lot of uh, different stuff but the, the water was really fun that's the breakdown of the shot. Go, and there we have also, when they go further and further down, the storm comes in, you know, it's a critical moment for those two. Um, so that was a, a early painting as well. And then there is more painting of what the forest could be inside, uh, you know, whereas we go deeper. So we took all those elements together, and we also look at picture. The moss was something very important, so we developed it in, uh, in effects, uh, and then of course put it in lighting to to render. Uh, but those were really great, and that's where we that's the breakdown. Yeah, all the mist, all these old elements, the droplet of water, all those layers that you put together. Uh, but the most was a big win when we got the most well I came with it. And finally, I'll finish by the shot because uh, um, uh, it's, a, it's a good element to bring bubble and kind of nature together. Uh, and also, it's, I think it's, it's one, one, one of my favorite shots in the, in the, in the movie. Uh, you have those two, that's the beginning of the adventure. And they really connect. Here we go. So that concludes my talk. Um, thank you very much. I also want to thank my team at DNAG, um, uh, both in London and Mumbai. 
that was that was amazing and we went through you know all the adventure together um and all the people we um you know i want to thank locksmith animation for you know bringing not only a great project but also their the first baby that was their first movie and you know, trusting us with the first project was amazing and it was it was, it was a great adventure um and also i want to thank uh, uh, you know all uh, my, my my friend will help me here at dnight to put that together um i have a you know cow uh, or Palo with you know help you know set up the, the meeting and uh, uh, Saz, Saj Dev also we helped me getting you know Element, Crosby, my producer, Tom Jacon, who is a, a president of animation. We actually started that team uh, and built it. So you know, we would not be here without him. And um, and uh, yeah, and I've also also Marwan Mohamed who actually helped me getting all those element together so i'm going to stop sharing thank you so much Philippe. that was a great and insightful session well thank you i'm sorry i don't so we don't have time for q a right yeah actually so, uh, and so i don't know what you i don't know what you missed from the presentation i'm really sorry i hope you didn't miss too much um, no problem at all we do understand thank you so much for joining us no, thank you. Thank you for having me. I hope to come hopefully next year and for real and have a fun of a live audience. Definitely. Thank you. Yeah. Bye. Bye bye.